Cloud RAN continues its march forward toward enabling improved network capacity, performance, and energy efficiency for service providers. And here to tell us about some significant developments in Cloud RAN is Geetha Ram, worldwide head of telco compute at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Geetha, thanks for being with us today. Can you give us an update of what's happening in the VRAN marketplace? Well, in uh, VRAN, Clarence, um, Operators are finally trying to do, you know, trials and POCs, demos, et cetera. They're getting past that stage and they're understanding what really works and doesn't work in terms of the performance, you know, different architectures in line, look aside, et cetera. Operations, you know, how do you go ahead and deploy with a zero touch provisioning, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of sites. All of those things are being trialed and that is where they're getting to the next step of actually ramp up and deployment. How about any of HPE's current initiatives? Right, and uh, HPE, one of the things that is um, uh, that has been given as a uh, feedback from all of the operators, right, is, uh, you know the statement, it takes a, a village to get uh, VRAN, Open RAN going, right? Uh, and so what they're asking all of us vendors is please work amongst yourselves to get us a pre-integrated solution. Uh, and so as a result of that, we've been working with all of our partners, you know, from uh, Ericsson to Nokia to Samsung and all of the CAS partners, Wind River, uh, VMware, Red Hat, et cetera, to create a pre-integrated solution that is ready for the uh, operators. And that's what HP is doing, facilitating those types of pre-integrated solutions uh, for the operators. So tell us more about the recent Cloud RAN announcement from Ericsson. Right, um, you know, that was a uh, first of its kind. Um, we were, um, you know, like uh, very early from a time to market. Uh, we worked it with, uh, you know, both Intel as well as Ericsson, and it is Intel's uh, Sapphire Rapids uh, EE, or the VRAN Boost, as they call it. Uh, and Ericsson used that on our HP DL110, the VRAN optimized server, and they made the first call. And you know, from there we go into productizing it and then getting some of the operators uh, going like uh, I was mentioning uh, earlier. That's a huge milestone. Right, absolutely, absolutely, yes. So what's next in this space for HPE? Well, uh, next for HPE is to um, get the um, operators uh, through the hurdle of operations. I mean, there's a lot of things we talk about on the technology side, right? I mean, is it inline or look aside? What's the performance? What's the power? I mean, all those, these things are extremely important. But then when it comes to the operations part, how do you scale? How do you make sure that a zero touch provisioning is available when you have thousands and thousands of sites uh, you know, around the world? And you know, how do you, with a, a one touch of a button, how do you update everything from firmware to you know, whatever? So how do you do that? And that's uh, what we're working with, again, with our partners, right? Making sure that that is all in place before a huge ramp up is done uh, at the customer side. You mentioned Ericsson and lots of other companies. Why are partnerships so important to developing VRAN? It uh, goes back to, you know, in a disaggregated world, uh, it is not about one player. That was the old school appliance world, it was one player. One player brought everything, everything from hardware, software to services. But in this case, it is multiple players. While there is good in that, you know, good for procurement, good for innovation and so on, it is challenging in the sense of who brings everything together? And this is why we have to work as a team. And it's not one of those where, you know, well, HP, you bring that, or Ericsson, you bring that, or Nokia, you bring that. It is, we all have to work together. And that is why the ecosystem is more than important in Open RAN and VRAN, because we do have to work together to make it all work. That's my you know, earlier statement of it takes a village uh, you know, to get Open RAN and VRAN going. As we're moving toward a truly virtual network, it seems like VRAN is moving a lot slower than some of the other components. Why is that? I mean, you know, um, people ask me this all the time, you know, how come it hasn't taken off, right? Um, and what I explain to people is, RAN is a very, very complicated space, right? Um, so the last time you didn't have a connection where you couldn't make a call 
how upset were you? Very upset. The last time you couldn't surf the web, you weren't really upset. Or if your computer broke down, you just rebooted your computer. But it's not the case with, you know, like a, a, a live call, right? And so before you go to a newer technology, whether it is disaggregated or in 5G, the RAN itself is changing with all of the beam forming techniques and all that. Before you go to that new technology, you have to make sure that it is really, you know, like uh, very, very solid, okay? And that is what they're all trying to make sure that it is, from operators to all of us partners. So it's taking a little bit longer in terms of, you know, whether it is uh, uh, performance or the power or the TCO, whatever, and we should give it some time. For everybody who basically says, you know, we've written off VRAN and Open RAN, I say, well, not so fast, okay? It's coming, and when it comes, and when it's solid, when it's ready, it's gonna be just, you know, hey, watch out, it's there. So, you know, that's my take. Ogita, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Clarence, appreciate it.